Hello students, if you remember in last page we have seen AC applied to inductor and AC applied to capacitor and then we have find out the capacitive reactors and inductive reactants. In this case, in this topic, we have to see the AC applied to the LCR circuit. LCR circuit means what the circuit in which L for inductor, C for capacitor, R for resistor, they are connected in series and to their series combination if you apply the AC then this resultant circuit is said to be LCR circuit. Now here, suppose this across L inductor, suppose current flowing through the inductor is I, capacitor is again I and resistor is again I because they are in series. The voltage drop across inductor according to Ohm's law V equal to IR is EL is voltage drop across inductor equal to I into XL, XL is resistance. Similarly, EC equal to I into XC. Similarly, ER equal to I into R. Now, apart from this, I have shown some diagrams here in the circuit according to the book. Just go to that. Start from resistor. If you see under resistor, I have shown current I and voltage ER. Both are moving in same direction. It will represent that current and EMF or voltage are in same phase. In case of capacitor, current leads the EMF by 90 degree means pi by 2 radian. Similarly, in case of inductor, EMF leads the current by pi by 2 or that is said to be 90 degree. Apart from this, if you see in this side by to this, I have drawn this diagram. This diagram stands for what? It is a phasor diagram I have drawn. And from this phasor diagram, if you see, OA is a vector which will represent for resistor. So ER is a EMF of resistor, I is a current flowing to resistor, both are moving in same direction, represented along OE. Then EC is a part where it EC represent the EMF across capacitor along negative y-axis and EL shown along positive y-axis because it is a EMF across inductor. And suppose this, we have drawn diagonal OK which will represent the E0 EMF, peak value of EMF, make an angle phi with the x axis. Now, if you see, this EL is bigger than the EC. EC is very small. If you see EC is very small, EL is bigger. So, if you subtract EL and EC, resultant part comes in positive y axis, that is OB, and that OB is given by EL minus EC. Subtraction of EL and EC, it comes in positive y direction, that is EL minus EC. So this diagram is said to be phasor diagram. Now the remaining part we are going to derive from this phasor diagram. What we have to derive according to Ohm's law, sorry, according to Pythagoras theorem, OK square equal to what? OA square plus AK square. So we can write OK square equal to, OK square is equal to square root of, OK square is equal to OA square plus AK square that we can write and as it is rectangle or we can say it is similar rectangular part basically I have shown here square but it is rectangle actually. So rectangle has opposite side same so we can write this as OA square plus instead of AK square we can write OB square. Now we find OK so this is OK square just find OK it is equal to square root of OA square plus OB square that we have find out the value of OK. But what is OA? This is nothing but represented by ER and this is represented by EL minus EC. If we put that value and solve this, what we get? I will write here OK equal to, what we get? OK equal to square root of OA square means ER square. So ER square plus this OB square means EL minus EC, EL minus EC whole square. EL is voltage across inductor, EC is voltage across capacitor. Now use the Ohm's law and put their values so we can write further as square root of ER is what? I square R square plus I square R square. So that is represented by I square R square plus EL minus EC. EL is nothing but this I XL minus I XC whole square. I X L minus I X C whole square. Suppose the current flowing through this is a peak value of current I zero, then this is I zero square I zero X L minus I zero X C whole square. If we take I zero common and take it outside I zero square common here here and here, take it outside. What we get? I zero square square root of R square 
plus xl minus xc whole square we get this is the value of ok this is the value of ok we get but what is ok it is nothing but e0 so we can represent it as a e0 equal to this is not a square because we have taken an outside it becomes i0 e0 equal to i0 into that is nothing but a square root of so that nothing but what we have derived this so continuation to the initial video we have to you have to see this continue to first video so accordingly if you see this part so the next step i will write this for here this step i will write it here so what we have to write e0 divide by i0 divide by i0 if we make it here we get it as square root of r square plus xl minus xc whole square xl minus xc whole square all things are in square root so in this case if you compare this part with the ohm's law that i will write here ohm's law v equal to i r i equal to v by r so that part we can write i equal to v by r or v by i is v by i just from this we find v by i v divided by i is nothing but r that is said to be a resistor so from that if you apply this term that we get in square root this one this might be equal to resistance of lcr circuit and that resistance of lcr circuit i will just uh, clear this diagram and i will write it here further that resistance of lcr circuit can is can be represented by the letter z so we can write z equal to e0 divided by i0 equal to square root of r square plus xl minus xc whole square and this is z is said to be resistance of lcr circuit and that resistance is said to be what impedance of a circuit point to be noted that resistance is said to be impedance of a circuit now what exactly this impedance impedance means what effective opposition offered by inductor capacitor and resistor in series to flow of ac current and that is said to be impedance of circuit if we take a reciprocal of this impedance the new term comes that is said to be admittance and impedance is always measured in ohm similar to resistance so here this much part we have seen now apart from this if you see in the same diagram in the same phasor diagram if you see the next part we have to derive from the phasor diagram if you see this is a phi what is tan of phi opposite side divided by adjacent side so i can write here tan of phi opposite side is ak divided by adjacent side is oa what is rectangle so oak must be equal to ob so we can write here ob divided by oa put the value of ob what is this ob el minus ec divided by er oa means er put the value of them what do we get i 0 into xl minus i 0 into xc divided by i 0 into r so all i from numerator take it common i 0 and denominator cancel out so we can write tan of phi equal to xl minus xc divided by r this implies that phi equal to tan inverse of xl minus xc divided by r so this equation give us the value of the angle between peak value of emf and the x axis that is phi phase difference we get from this equation and once we get a phase difference we can write uh, another equation that i will write it here so we can write the equation for a current and emf i equal to i0 sin of omega t sin of omega t plus phi plus phi is a phase difference given by this equation e equal to e0 sin of omega t plus phi again phi is given by this equation now within this we have to see the three cases now what are the three cases suppose the first case xl is equal to xc if xl is equal to xc if we see in this equation put this value in this equation xl equal to xc what is tan phi tan phi is 0 tan of phi is 
if tan of phi is zero means what the phase difference phi between them is zero if phase difference is zero we can say emf and current are in phase they comes in same phase if the x is equal to xc the second condition we have to put that i will write here above suppose the second condition we have to put that is nothing but what xl is greater than xc second condition is what suppose xl is greater than xc now as xl is greater than xc just put here we get tan phi is positive so it is positive means phi is positive it is positive means what the voltage across inductor is greater than voltage across capacitor our circuit is said to be inductive dominated inductive dominated circuit inductance is more so it is said to be inductance dominated circuit and the third and last case we have to see in that third and last case what we have to see suppose exactly opposite to second case that we have taken if xc is greater than xl this is c xc is greater than xl definitely then what will occur here this this term is greater so it becomes tan phi is negative so we can write tan phi is negative phi is negative means what voltage across capacitor is greater than voltage across inductor the circuit is said to be capacitive dominated circuit below that they have shown the diet triangle that was actually taken from the phasor diagram and just put that value and they find out the uh, nothing but they have find out the value of the tan phi similarly already we have find it here so in this fashion what will occur that we have seen the next three points are there power in power to the ac circuit we are applied to resistor capacitor inductor that part is keep this year due to covid 19 so we are not going in detail of that we have to go to next topic of our syllabus that is said to be lc oscillations so just start with here lc oscillations so what exactly lc oscillations are that we have to see to understand this in your book initially might be just they have just given the introductory part of this so we'll go directly to the concept suppose we have taken a we have just taken drawn one circuit to this circuit one side we have applied the inductor and to other side of the circuit we have applied the capacitor with its plates this is a inductor this is a capacitor so this circuit consist of inductor and capacitor so it is said to be in the lc circuit and what are this lc oscillation to understand this suppose current flowing through this is zero initially i flowing through is zero suppose we have applied the switch switch is open no current will flow to this and at that time capacitor is fully charged capacitor is fully charged such that the upper plate of capacitor has a positive charge so this is positively charged and this lower plate has a negative charge such type of thing that means what initial event switch is open capacitor is fully charged with upper plate positive charge lower plate negative charge no current passes to the inductor okay now what will occur when we close this switch when we close this switch what will occur suddenly the current will flowing through the inductor get increase current flowing through the inductor get increase so it will explain change in current so it will produce a changing magnetic flux around it so it will produce such type of changing magnetic flux around it according to faraday's and lenz law and emf is induced in the same coil that is said to be self induction and direction of that emf is exactly opposite to this this will occur when we close the switch at the same time the capacitor charge discharging because current is flowing through this so it charge discharging after some time it is seen that capacitor loses its all charges so that the energy of capacitor initially whatever with the energy of capacitor stored by capacitor that we have learned in electrostatics energy stored in capacitor is 1 by 2 q if you remember 1 by 2 q and what is that value q suppose charge charge on the capacitor is q0 suppose charge on the capacitor is q0 then with small q0 1 by 2 q 
q0 square 1 by 2 q0 square divided by c this much energy initially capacitor has after we close the switch current passes to the coil it will induce a emf in a coil exactly opposite to the charges and will produce changing magnetic flux after some time whole charges of capacitor get disappear means capacitor get discharge completely there is no charge on capacitor now current get flow no charge on capacitor but where the charges goes where this energy goes this energy is in electric form electric energy that get converted into magnetic energy in terms of magnetic flux changing magnetic flux and that magnetic energy was represented by this energy stored that is conversion of electric energy of capacitor to magnetic energy given by ub equal to 1 by 2 l into i0 square or i square l into i0 square or i square this is a energy stored in terms of magnetic field this is energy stored in terms of electric field so when there is a positive charge to capacitor and negative charge to capacitor is fully charged it has only this energy electric energy this energy is zero when we close the switch after some time capacitor start discharging after some time all the charges of capacitor disappear capacitor totally discharge so its energy ue becomes zero but what it result it result into increase in magnetic flux link with the coil it will increase the magnetic energy so what is occurring electric energy of charge capacitor converted into magnetic energy and we know according to Faraday and Lenz this this EMF induced in this EMF and current induced in this is exactly opposite to initial polarity of capacitor after discharging whole capacitor the capacitor due to this again current flow and this initially is positive now it becomes negative this initial is negative now it becomes positive capacitor charges again due to this changing magnetic flux with opposite polarities now what will occur this energy get decrease this energy get increase so again the magnetic energy converted into electric energy so this process is continuously going on and this is said to be oscillation produced in inductor capacitor circuit and they are said to be lc oscillation they are said to be lc oscillation now this lc oscillation remains undamped unless and until there is no loss of energy but we know that every inductor has some resistance and due to that there is always loss of energy in terms of heat that's why lc oscillations are said to be damp oscillation and the reason they have given below this every inductor has some resistance this cause energy loss as a heat that already i have told you the amplitude of oscillation goes on increasing and they finally dies out finished that already we have learned in chapter oscillation damp harmonic oscillator and damp oscillation second reason they have given even if resistance were zero if you make the resistance of this coil is zero we have made it suppose practically not possible suppose we have made it zero still energy of system would not remain constant it is radiated away radiated away in the form of electromagnetic wave which is a concept of transmitter working of transmitter that means what suppose it has resistance zero but whenever current pass to the coil it will emit some electromagnetic wave so energy of this get emitted in the form of wave so the total energy decreases that's why amplitude of lc oscillation is said to be damp oscillations they are said to be damp os damp means what their amplitude decreases with time i will show the example of damp just it is revision we can say initially amplitudes are maximum then it decreases like this and finally after some time it becomes zero so such type of oscillations are said to be damp decreasing amplitude why amplitude decreasing because energy get lost in terms of heat and electromagnetic wave so this is nothing but a lc oscillation now we have to see the electric resonance so that part we have to see electric resonance what exactly electric resonance is that we have to see if you remember in stationary waves that chapter we have superposition of wave we have seen the resonance of the wave similarly in electric circuit electronic circuit or electric circuit there are resonance 
when the natural frequency of vibration of any circuit match with the match with the external frequency the two frequency exactly matches the amp the we can say resonance get occurred let's start with the example of this suppose we have again the same lcr circuit l it is c and this is nothing but r circuit and this lcr circuit is connected to ac suppose as we have seen earlier also so this is l this is c r circuit and connected to ac this is a current i0 suppose flowing to this or i suppose flowing to this and now here we know this lcr circuit we have derived one equation for impedance z equal to what square root of r square plus xl minus xc whole square if you remember this type of equation we have derived put the value of xc and xl xc and xl capacitive reactors and inductive reactors that we have already derived earlier in case of ac applied to capacitor inductor then we can write it is square root of r square xl is what omega l minus x is what 1 divided by omega c whole bracket square this is nothing but a impedance of this lcr circuit we can see now suppose while doing this what we have done suppose we have changed the frequency frequency get changes frequency get changes xl get increases if frequency increases xl increases and xc decreases exactly opposite they are already we have learned now here suppose we are going to change the frequency such that at certain frequency at certain frequency f equal to fr at certain frequency f equal to fr or omega equal to omega r resonance get occurred so that the value of xl and xc are same value of xl and xc are same or we can say omega l equal to 1 divided by omega c at this frequency it will occur then we can write the same equation that this impedance if both are same these are zero then z equal to what resistive component so we can say z equal to only resistance it has resistance so emf and current are in phase they are in phase this will occur when we change the frequency at certain frequency f equal to fr xl equal to xc that two frequency get match so the reactors get match and we can say resonance get occurred now xl equal to xc put the value omega l equal to 1 divided by omega c and it is r suffix r it is na so just move this omega to this side and l to this side why we what we get omega r square equal to 1 by lc what is omega r equal to 1 divided by square root of lc omega equal to what 2 pi f so it is 2 pi f r equal to 1 divided by square root of lc move this 2 pi to that side we get fr equal to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of lc so this is the resonant frequency at which the capacitive reactants and inductive reactants are same we can say resonance get occurred then the impedance is has only resistive component and frequency dependent components are zero so this is the equation fr equal to this resonance frequency but when z is r means what in the circuit act as a resistive circuit in that case if you remember we have the equation for current i0 equal to e0 divided by r ac applied to resistor if you remember in that case this is value of i0 if this is the case we can say this is equal to e0 divided by z because e0 and z r and z are same here so same you can write so if we see if resistance get increase i0 get decrease resistance decreases i0 get increases for lower resistors the value of current becomes maximum so i will rub this part so we can draw one diagram here that will give the explanation of this electric resonance especially whatever we have seen here that is said to be series resonance why we have seen series resonance circuit because lcr are connected in series now in that case we can write as resistance is less current is maximum so we can represent it by simple diagram like this if frequency is taken along x-axis and current is taken along y-axis then we have to draw the diagram like this and this will occur at certain frequency 
FR resonance frequency its value already we have find out so from this we have to see now some characteristics of this resonance circuit so the first series resonance circuit the first resonance occurred at FR where XL equal to XC that already we have seen resonant frequency FR equal to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of LC that also we have derived impedance is minimum because it is resistive component and circuit is purely resistive that already we have seen Z equal to R current has a maximum value see current has a maximum value here IMAX for certain frequency only okay next when a number of frequencies are fed it fed to the circuit large number of frequencies are fed to circuit the circuit will accept only the frequency fr and give the maximum current for that remaining frequencies it will give the minimum current and due to this acceptance it is said to be acceptor circuit so it is said to be acceptor circuit what will occur suppose to this circuit we have applied a frequency start from zero to some value these frequencies are changing it is seen that circuit will accept the frequency fr and give the maximum value of current and all remaining higher and lower frequencies the value of current is less than i max and that's why it is said to be acceptor circuit exactly opposite to this the second resonance circuit we have to learn and that is said to be parallel resonance circuit so parallel resonance circuit what exactly this as its name said that is parallel resonance circuit the inductor and capacitors are connected in parallel so i will draw it so this is the inductor we know and suppose this is a capacitor they are connected in parallel and commonly they are applied to the ac like this so this capacitor this inductor this circuit is said to be the parallel resonance circuit and due to this some current is flowing to this i and current flowing to this is i l current flowing to this is i c i c i l and again here it comes to be i and here it is i l here it comes to be i c okay capacitor inductor current comes together so in this situation what will we have to see suppose i want to find out total current i i is sum of i l and i c i can write here i equal to i l plus i c current to the inductor plus current to the capacitor now in the common sense that if if we see the value of i l can be written as I L can be written as we know V equal to I R. We are going to find I V by R. Okay, so I L equal to V by R. I L it is so it is for L V L divided by R L. What is the resistance of this X L? So we can write here X L. What is the voltage E zero E divided by X L E divided by X L. What is the value of this E? E equal to E0 sine of omega t. E equal to E0 sine of omega t minus pi by 2. That already we have derived. Put it here. So we can write E0 by XL sine of omega t minus pi by 2. Suppose equation 1 give the value of IL current flowing to the inductor. Similarly, we can write here IC is equal to E0 by XC sine of omega t plus pi by 2 equation 2. It will give the value of current to the capacitor. Okay, now we have IL and IC. Put these values in equation A. If we put all these values in equation A, we get a sum of them. So what we can write? I equal to, I equal to, what is the things? So sine omega t minus pi by 2 is what? Minus, so this plus this is nothing but i. This plus this is nothing but i. But sine of omega t minus pi by 2 is minus cos omega t. So we can write E0 by XL into minus cos of omega t plus E0 by XC into cos of omega t. I want to remove the minus sign. So take this first term. So E0 by XC cos omega t minus e0 by xl cos omega t if we consider this equation in both the equation e0 cos omega t is common so we can take it common so we can write this as further e0 by e0 cos omega t is common what is remaining in the bracket e0 by e0 we have taken common 
वन बाय एक्स सी माइनस वन बाय एक्स एल नो वट इज वन बाय एक्स सी पुट डर वैल्यूज वी गेट ई जीरो कॉस ओमेगा टी एक्स इज वन डिवाइड बाय वन बाय ओमेगा सी सो इट कम्स टू बी ओमेगा सी माइनस वन डिवाइड बाय ओमेगा एल दैट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ करेंट हियर दैट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ करेंट हियर दैट इज आई इक्वल टू ई जीरो कॉस ओमेगा टी ओमेगा सी माइनस वन बाय ओमेगा सी नाउ आई इज मिनिमम हियर वी हैव टू सी दिस करंट इज मिनिमम वेन दिस आर सेम और दिज आर इक्वल टू जीरो ओमेगा सी माइनस वन डिवाइड बाई ओमेगा एल इज जीरो एट सर्टन फ्रिक्वेंसी ओनली देन वी कैन से करंट इज मिनिमम एंड इफ द करंट इज मिनिमम दिस कंडीशन सैटिस्फाइड देन अगेन वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट ओमेगा आर इन टू सी इक्वल टू वन डिवाइड बाय ओमेगा आर इन टू एल सो बाय दैट फैशन फाइनली वी कैन फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ एफ आर एज वन डिवाइड बाय टू पाई स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एल सी आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डिराइव दिस ऑलरेडी दिस डिराइव इन लास्ट पीरियड एंड बाय द सेम वे अकॉर्डिंग टू लास्ट वी आर गोइंग टू ड्रॉ द ग्राफ फॉर दिस पैरल रेजोनेंट सर्किट एंड इट इज एक्जैक्टली अपोजिट टू सीरीज रेजोनेंट सर्किट it become like this so here it is current and here it is a frequency we have taken at certain frequency the circuit will use the value fr and it will the current will be minimum minimum at certain frequency and that's why it is said to be at the rejector circuit it is sometimes said to be rejector circuit it will reject this uh, minimum frequency means rejected at this frequency all other frequency current get accepted this get rejected now this is nothing but what parallel resonance circuit from this we have to see some characteristics that they have shown so resonance occur at xl equal to x same condition resonance frequency is given by this equation that already we have seen impedance is maximum initially impedance is resistive so it is minimum if the impedance is resistance resistive it is minimum current is maximum that's why exactly opposite part comes initially resistance is minimum so current is maximum here this is for series resonance in case of parallel resonance resistance is maximum impedance is maximum so this current is minimum so that is nothing but this part when we apply all frequency to such a circuit it will reject the um, reject the signal of resonant frequency and accept the other frequencies so that's why it is said to be rejector circuit so in this fashion in this chapter we have learned up to this and this is the last topic next topic of this chapter get eliminated this year due to covid 19 so what all of you have to do whatever i have taught you today just do one thing watch my video and this video you have to watch continuation to the initial video initial means now i am going to send you two video at a time and you have to watch both the video at a time uh, one after other because some part is in first video and remaining part is in second video so watch whole video after watching just try to read the same topic from the book it will definitely increase your understanding and after just reading the same topic from the book again watch the whole video and still if you have any problem you are free to ask me anytime so thank you let's see you in next lecture and we'll start a new chapter thank you